Friends, welcome to this daily devotion for Thursday, December 3rd, 2020. I'm Pastor Mark, and along with Pastor Wesley, we have the privilege of serving the United Methodist Church of New Lenox. This is a time of daily devotion where we seek to grow closer together in love of God and love of neighbor. Here are the words of invocation. O God, our Father, who didst send forth thy Son to be King of kings and Prince of peace, Grant all the kingdoms of this world may become the kingdom of Christ and learn of him the way of peace. Send forth among all people the spirit of goodwill and reconciliation. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Our theme this week is Preparing the Way. And we continue with our theme, Psalm Psalm 138, picking up in verse 7. Whenever I am in deep trouble, You make me live again. You send your power against my enemy's wrath. You save me with your strong hand. The Lord will do this for my sake. May God bless the reading of this scripture. It's good to know that someone has your back. I talk about that to my children often. I remind them that they have each other, that they need to be looking out for each other, caring for each other like we care for them. That's part of being a sibling. I know some of you are shaking your heads because you may have complicated sibling relationships and all relationships are complicated. But in an ideal world, your sibling, your brother, your sister, your sibling would have your back, or your best friend, your BFF, is a person that has your back. Your spouse, I hope, is a person that has your back. Your parents, perhaps. Again, I understand relationships are complicated. But in ideal world, the people that are closest to you are the people that have your back. The psalmist reminds us that even if you have no one, God has your back. Whenever you're in trouble, God will make you live again. Whenever you're surrounded by enemies, God will send your power. God will save you. The Lord will do it for you, for your sake. What good news is that? To know that in your corner is the King of Kings, the Prince of Peace. Our other scripture reading today comes from the prophet Isaiah. Pastor Wesley uh, did a wonderful, wonderful Uh, overview sermon uh, of Isaiah and lifted up many of these passages. And so I'll offer you Isaiah 62 today. This would be from 3rd Isaiah, if you're interested in that. For Zion's sake, I won't keep silent. And for Jerusalem's sake, I won't sit still. Until her righteousness shines out like a light and her salvation blazes like a torch. Nations will see your righteousness, all kings your glory. You will be called by a new name, which the Lord's own mouth will determine. You will be a a splendid garland in the Lord's hands, a royal turban in the palm of God's hand. You will no longer be called abandoned in your land will no longer be called deserted. Instead, you will be called, My delight is in her. And your land married, because the Lord delights in you. And your land will be cared for once again. 
as a young man marries a young woman, so your sons will marry you with the joy of a bridegroom because of his bride. So your God will rejoice because of you. Upon your walls, Jerusalem, I have appointed sentinels. Continually, all day and night, they won't keep silent. You who call on the Lord, don't rest. Don't allow God to rest until he establishes Jerusalem and makes it the praise of the earth. The Lord has promised with a raised hand and a strong arm, he will never again give your grain as food for your enemies. Foreigners won't drink your wine for which you labored. Those who harvest will eat it and praise the Lord. Those who gather will drink and make my holy courtyards. Pass through. Pass through the gates. Prepare the way for the people. Build. Build the road. Clear away the stones. Rise up a signal for the peoples. This is what the Lord announced to the earth's distant region. Say to daughter Zion, look, your deliverer arrives, bringing reward and payment. They will be called the holy people, redeemed by the Lord. You will be called sought after, a city that is not abandoned. God bless the reading of the prophet today. Pastor Wesley explained in his sermon that this part of Isaiah is looking forward to a hope, a restoration of a kingdom once destroyed and scattered, humiliated. This Advent, friends, we need to have hope for restoration, and and not just restoration to get back to the way things were. Not just rebuilding the way it was. I've seen that happen before uh, in very practical ways in churches. Uh, A church burns down, and they want it rebuilt just the way it was which aesthetically is fine. It's beautiful. I mean, we have some gorgeous churches, including our own. But if you're into contracting or building or architecture, a building that's two, three, four, or if we leave these United States and go overseas, five, six, 10, 15, 100 years old, <laughs> There have been some new innovations, some things that make life a little bit more pleasant. Air conditioning, heating, (laughs) indoor plumbing, things that you might want your house, your church to include. I know that's kind of a silly example, but I think it's also true of life post great conflict and unrest. We can try to go back to the way things were, at least the way we envisioned things were, as imperfect as they were. Or we can try to create something new. A new normal. I I talk about this a lot because I at least have experienced in my life times of disorientation and times of new orientation. Times where things were out of control and there wasn't going back to the way things were. It was just a new normal, a new way of doing life. You can't exist in this kind of chaos for a lifetime. Even this year, there's an understandable sense of fatigue in our world because you cannot live in ready alert mode for an entire year. None of us can. We just aren't designed to do it. And so there will be a new normal, whatever that looks like. And again, we can try to go back or we can look for what God has in store moving forward. Because if we're talking about our church, just capital C church, the big church, things weren't going in a real great direction. (laughs) So we don't want to reclaim what we had. 
We want a new normal where we are bearing fruit, where we are preparing the way of the Lord for us, for them, everyone. Today's reading comes from Servant Leadership by Robert K. Greenleaf. We live at a time when holders of power are suspect and actions that stem from authority are questioned. Legitimized power has become an ethical imperative. Can discriminating people be helped to find the means for legitimizing power? There are legions of persons of goodwill who could sharpen and clarify their view of a more serving society They would like to live in and help build, if in no other way than by holding a deepened interest and concern about it and speaking to the condition of others. Is not such widespread action necessary if the climate that favors service and supports servants is to be maintained? Friends, There is nothing new under the sun. (laughs) And what I was just speaking about is reiterated in a work that was not published in 2020, in a work, uh, Servant Leadership, which I assume was published decades ago. And so the need for change and growth and goodwill for all men that this season is supposed to be about has needed to happen for my entire life. So perhaps this Advent season, we can prepare the way for the Lord for the first time, perhaps in many of our lives. Not just being comfortable with the nice things we've had, but hoping truly for a different world. So I think we all agree right now, we don't want to live in this forever. And it's a lot about a lot more than a plague or a pandemic, a virus. That was the word I was looking for, but I think plague is appropriate. It's about a lot of things and a lot of people who are hurting and suffering and a lot of systems that continue to keep people down. So how can we speak to the good of others in all things we do? And friends, this church that we are a part of, and maybe you're not a part of UMCNL, but I can speak to our church does so many things for that. And I hope if you're part of a church, they do the same thing. And if you're not, you're certainly willing and uh, welcome. That was the word I was looking for to come partner with us in our work, in God's work. To serve others. Friends, today we pray for those who are struggling and the list grows. The death toll isn't just a number. Those are people. Millions of people. Hundreds of thousands of people here in the United States alone. Hundreds of people in our community. Dozens in our church. Everyone has a name. Everyone has a family. Everyone won't be there this Christmas, regardless of whether we get together or not. Everyone was an empty table, an empty chair at Thanksgiving. And so, friends, if you're struggling, believe me, I understand. We're all struggling. But if you're struggling a little bit less. Please pray for those who have lost. This is a terrible time to have lost someone. Keep them in your prayers. Hold them, call on them, write to them. But pray for them daily. They need your prayers. Let us pray. Lord, so many have struggled this past year. More than anything through this pandemic, the lies that have been lost unnecessarily, unexpectedly, have rocked families and worlds and devastated spirits. Please be with those 
who are struggling. We recognize, Lord, that we are all struggling right now, that we all need you. And so we let out a collective sigh and cry out, Save us. Come, Lord Jesus, come. And on our good days, encourage us to reach out and help those who are not having good days. And on our bad days, encourage us to reach out and be helped. We pray these things in your holy name. Pray in the prayer your Son Jesus Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, today I leave you with this benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you, and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you, and give you peace. Until tomorrow, friends. Goodbye.